All right, I've got Travis Haley here with me today, and he's gonna help me take a look at my grip and the biomechanical efficiency of it, and maybe you can learn a thing or two from it as well. Travis, I appreciate you being here. Thank you, Rob. I wanna talk about some, some things that I'm seeing out there that uh, we're taking a little bit deeper dive into the grip, if you will, and it's not recipes or, or systems, if you will, because I don't like to be limited to a system because all, all systems we know have, have limitations. So uh, I try to break these things down, the processes in which to achieve a goal. So people say, get a good grip. Well, what does that mean, really? Just like saying, get a good stance, get a good grip, see the target. Well, what does that mean? So we take a deeper dive into the science of shooting, and instead of going off a recipe, we go off of simple things that are around us all the time. Friction, leverage, gravity, uh, biomechanics. And so I'll use Rob here to show you what I'm talking about with something as simple as a grip that you can think about when you go to the range of practice. So Rob, go ahead and draw your, your blue gun there. Go ahead and extend on the target, okay? So now, Rob's got a good grip here. So Rob's a good shooter, so what I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna actually manipulate his grip um, like you might see out there on the shooting range where some people have thumbs up or thumbs down or teacups and all this other stuff. Um, so what I want you to do right now, Rob, is do like the older thumbs up, like, uh, like I used to shoot 1911s back in the older days. Okay, so this is a, a thumbs up. What I want you to realize is when you have your thumbs up, the recoil is gonna go up. And what I mean by that is because of the way the hands work. If you think about the bones in the hands, and without turning this into a full anatomy discussion, you have the carpal in the, in the hand here, okay? That's this little knot back here. Most people would not even consider this a part of the thumb, but it's, it is the base of the thumb, where people get that mixed up on this hand. And so in this case, we have the carpals touching each other back here. We don't want the carpals touching each other, okay? Because what's gonna happen is with that, with thumbs up, recoil is gonna go up. Because when I do an impulse test on him, what happened is the whole gun just shifted in his hand. So we're talking about the first principle of friction. We've gotta have 100% friction contact on the gun. And of course, this is where a friction medium would help too. Grip tape or you know, be careful stippling your guns because you can certainly overheat them and make them brittle. But uh, having a friction medium between your hands and the gun is not a bad idea if it's wet, raining, slippery, greasy, uh, bloody, you name it. So in this case, we see an impulse test. The gun's shift in his hands and you can see that space right here between his fingers separate. So now I want you to actually go opposite of that and go, uh, uh, completely thumbs forward like this over torquing thing that you're starting to see in the, the what we call the totally tactical world um, and talk about the efficiencies or inefficiencies of this. So now we have this giant gap, this this daylight as I call it between okay his metacarpal joint here and his his carpal joint of the other finger. Okay, the other the other hand. So now when I do the impulse test, you feel that breakage in there? Yep. Okay. Okay. Lots of slip. There's no friction there. So now go ahead and get that get good grip. And what we're talking about when I say good grip is straight lines. Straight lines are strong, angles are weak. So if this thumb has a straight line shooting out the bore, that's biomechanics. That's biomechanical efficiency. If it's angled any bit, you might need to move the hand up just a, a smidgen, like an eighth of an inch or so to correct that. Remember, just the law of just a little bit will fix a lot. So once he has that, now, by impulse, the gun didn't move in your hand, did it? No. Okay, doesn't move, doesn't move, doesn't move. So that's friction. That's how it works with the hands. Now. If I came in there and popped his hands off, do you see how his hand popped off the gun? Okay, what we're doing there is now testing leverage. And how do we get leverage on a gun? Because I'm sure a lot of you have seen, somebody will shoot a gun, whether it's uh, yourself and your hand slips off your gun, you gotta reposition it and put it back on and reposition it and fire and reposition it. That's called milking the grip. All you need to do is get simple leverage. So go ahead and extend out again. And if you remember when we were kids and you'd sit in the pool and you'd kind of squirt your hands and you'd have the water shoot out of your thumbs, Right here is where we're getting that from, okay? The squirt gun technique, like your hands in the pool. So that's where I want you to get that contact. If I had two vice grips right here and squeeze these together, that will also help connect the isosceles, in Rob's case, uh, with the tension across the, t the chest and connect this whole entire system. So now, now his hands stay on the gun. And gun fires, pops, and you can see the hands didn't come off the gun. So now Rob is showing good friction and good leverage. It's not a recipe, it's not a system, it's science, okay? And it's something that we can utilize on a daily basis instead of searching and looking for answers out there, which is gonna be a full-time job for you, or we can think about the real basics of where all these things started. Study biomechanical shooting history. You'll find it back in World War I, World War II. You remember seeing the publications, yep. the old guys shooting like this with the night, little the helmets on, like they're storming the beaches normally like my grandfather did. And that was actual biomechanics. They talked about how to extend the elbow and how to point the hips and all the other things. So there's great reference tools out there, but you can see we don't do it like that anymore, do we? Because we're smarter. And so think about being smart instead of just being a shooter first. Be a thinker.
Okay, think about biomechanical efficiency. Thanks, Rob. Thank you. Thank you.